All right, everyone, welcome to the Advent of Code 2019 in Erlang through some ad hoc and edited video. Today is day 15 on an early Sunday morning. So let's go to the calendar and see what we have today. Ooh, 10 days left to go. All right, oxygen system. The oxygen system for part of the ship has failed. All right. Encode program. So that's every two days now. All right. I no longer need to copy paste that stuff, but I'm going to open it up for future reference. My puzzle input uh, can be used to remotely control the repair droid. So it's still going to be something that fixes something remotely. Following steps in a loop forever. Movement command through input instruction. Send a movement command to the repair droid. Oh, I accept a movement command through an input instruction. No, okay, it accepts that. But it sends back a uh, movement. Okay, because I'm writing the repair droid on that one. Uh, okay. Status of the repair and via input instruction. That's cool. That's almost a program that's written for me. So I'm guessing that those are going to be kind of uh, useful. The repair droid can reply with any of the all. Oops. What did I do? Oh, there. All right, all right. Oh, God. D for the droid. So we've got an empty map once again, which means that we're going to use relative coordinates where V starts at zero, zero, like we've done before. Uh, all right, to make the droid go north, send it one. If it replies with zero, you know that it's a wall and that the droid didn't move. Okay, to move V. Hmm. So we're just going to search, all right. So I'm just walking through the system until I find the oxygen system, okay. Oh, and it was only two moves away from the repair to red starting position. Okay, so I'm guessing that I will have to um, walk through the map randomly until I find the right oxygen system and then do uh, a short path out of these, which is kind of interesting in there. Um, open areas are going to be fine. Let's get the puzzle input. So here's an interesting thing. Uh, I'm curious to see if um, how large this is of an input, 3,000 characters. One of the interesting things that I've um, I've seen people do on these programs is that you could directly, you know, hack the program. That would break the spirit of the thing. Uh, but if you know, for example, that the uh, ox 
antigen system is giving you a reply of two, then there is a good chance that uh, the map is actually just a bunch of zeros, ones, and twos in there that are littered in the thing, and then you could go find the two and reverse engineer the map. I won't be doing that because, as I said, that's not the spirit of the problem. But I'm kind of annoyed with the thing, so clearly I'm going to need to do something like uh, until oxygen is found, which is going to be build the map and then to find the shortest path. Um, finding the shortest path is going to be a little bit annoying on that one, uh, mostly because the way I tend to do that will be to just use, you know, a graph again, but I don't want to use the map as a graph. I probably can do something. Let's start by building the map anyway. We can transform the format a bit later. Uh, so I'm going to use shorter functions. Kind of annoying because we do not have the simple map so it just again assume that the first implementation is going to be right so uh, I will start uh, a process to do it again I'm, I'm currently thinking of if I make a bot to use its own process or if I do it in the main process and then just exit the thing uh, the looping and the searching is going to be a bit easier to do that way, so... Um, so here it will be... You know, it's, uh, it's going to be a droid with a map. And... As usual with these... I'm going to send myself the result of the thing that is done, then when I I'm going to Yep, the map is going to be here. It's just a program. And when I receive the map, I will uh find short path on the map. So my droid is going to uh, going to receive a program, and I will need to initialize it, uh, which means that I will start with um, And the program. 
gram.txt and send me the IO2 to draw it. This is giving me its speed. And I draw it itself. Um, you know, let's give it a state record again. how much stuff I'm going to need. I'm just going to do it that way first. I can always refactor. And I know that 0 0.00 is um, the order of operations for this. I set it a movement command in order. Uh, via an input instruction, send a repair command to repair draw it. Okay, so I'm going to pick a command on map. This is going to be giving me a direction. Then I will take the droid and I will send it the direction. After that, I'm going to wait on IO, and that's going to be a tile. And so that I will, you know, apply the tile to. the map and that will be, you know, stop new map in which case I will just return new map and I'm done with the loop or We'll call uh, you know search new map. In which case, the only thing I can do is and I think that's the entire droid for that thing. So picking a command is going to be something that oh crap! I don't start a current position. do it that way. Let's carry all of this state in the map. This is not the clearest one, but okay. So for all of these, the thing I will want to do is um, get all the positions around where I am, and I think I can, yeah, only four directions, and out of these, um, I will pick one randomly. And here's how I'm going to build this. I think this is going uh, to be kind of an interesting one. Um, so the options are going to be X and in a list. And I'm going to build a list by doing my ps get, and I will look for the north, and so that will be y plus one because it is higher up in map with a default of three, and so if it doesn't exist, uh. Uh, undefined because it hasn't been explored and I will favor looking for the undefined maps at first all right uh, second one I'm going to look for 
south. Filter out those where okay. Let me format this one a bit differently. I will use so here I have to type in direction. do is instantly filter out the wall types. So if type is not equal to a wall, I'm going to do this. And now here's the um, little thing. I have the choice between free and undefined. And um, essentially what I'll do is sort my options and then and reverse them. And that will give me instantly um, a list that will be ordered from undefined to free walls. So that just doing this, it will automatically always go towards the, oh, that won't work. Okay, so I'm going to start this different. Okay, so here's the thing that I just realized is that if I do it that way, and I end up in this kind of dead end, and I end always end up picking the same option, I could be stuck in a loop. So I will need to, in fact, uh, when the entry is free, store a counter of how many times I've been in that one. It is free by virtue of being there. Um, and I've been there once. And so what I will do is order them by how many times I've been there. Um, and now I no longer need to sort them. And so automatically it will try to get me to explore the areas I have not seen yet and um, prioritize going there. Because all these things I've never been through are going to be a one. Those that otherwise are going to be a wall, but they're filtered out. And those I've been to will have a one uh, with my position in there. So. My command is going to be this. Uh, actually, I don't need to do it that way. My command is going to be, uh, I don't care for the type. I only want the direction and I don't care for the rest. And this is the command I'm going towards. Now, if I want to Apply the tile, I'm also going to need to have the command in that one. So applying the command is going to give me a direction, which is going to be uh, not something like that. And then I'm going to be able to apply it. So. Okay, I'm going to need another helper here to be clear. So if I get x, y, fourth, 
this is exactly what I did in the uh, function above, and this is going to replace it. Still curious a bit about how I'm going to do the shortest path thing. I'm sure there's a fun way to do it, but I'll get there when I get there. This is the reason why I'm doing it for this little function here. Um, because if it's a wall, then my direction doesn't change, but I will store in the map. my own position. Oh, and those would be search some more. And this is supposed to be called apply tile. And search some more. And the direction is, um, what was the word to use? Was it free? then search some more and apply direction B to the direction this is going to be my new position so and uh, is now equal to 1 because I have visited it by virtue of being on the tile. And then oxygen. So what I'm going to do for that one is stop. But I can apply the instruction here of is oxygen and why not return my actual position to be zero zero because I'm now done right I won't need to rewind the map by hand elsewhere so this should do it I'm going to find a short path, but to find a short path I'm going to, you know, cheat that one by just returning the map itself and see what I get when I run the program in the shell. Let's get rid of all the unused cases. Those shouldn't be unused. Those are bugs. Day 15 P1. Not a good sign. No matter the amount of call. 
files. Hundred of them. Scope local. Going to oh, go for the little IO format, it's going to be easier. Moved, found, boom. Although I could find a good way, a cool way to print the map, but let's start without this for now. So, direction and uh. And we'll just see if I ever find something that would be useful in there. Yeah, I'm in a very, very tight loop. So. What do we get in terms of this? I'm going to start from the given position and I'm going to get the maybe my choosing of direction is not very good. No, that's disappointing. So I clearly mess up somewhere because it should go through one of these. And when it's south, it still has the option. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. I get it. I apply the direction and I always set the value to um, one in the new position, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, I first need to get the old count, which is going to be map get of new p in the map with a default of zero. And new p is going to be the old count plus one. Here we go. Now it works. And we have priorities on these. I'm going to go and uh, clear the output. And in find short map. Uh, I will have the result directly, so I can play with the map a bit. 908 positions on this one. Fun times. So, uh, I want to see how far this uh, oxygen tank is located. So, um, minus fourteen, fourteen. All right. Um, okay, so we're at the part where I have to do a shortest path. Um, I do have counts of all the things, uh, but the easiest way is obviously, again, for me to use an algorithm that does it for me, which would be to do it in a graph. Uh, but doing it in a graph requires me to put all the sequences and analyze all of them and do all the searches. Um, easier one might be just 
just do uh, a depth first search and find all the possible avenues that bring me to that point that is mark oxygen uh, by doing the search in there so that will uh, that will be what I will do because I haven't done a lot of that first searches at this point in time so uh, I'm just going to be calling it search I don't think I have a function called search already nope okay so Interestingly, this is kind of the same stuff I could be doing for this one, but all right. So I'm going to reuse pick comment here. The function can be used in both cases. The difference is that uh, I'm going to change it. A little bit. I'm going to make opt commands. Want to be, and those are going to be all the optional commands I have. And I am going to explore all of them all the time because this is going to be a search. And this is going to be the result of this one. And pick comments is just going to be using Oh I cannot backtrack on this. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Every time I move in a given direction, I'm going to put a wall in there. Um, we'll see. But this should keep, you know, everything working fine. I can't. I'm going to use this, just make sure that I broke nothing. Like D and put should remain the same, yes. Okay. So for these, I'm going to search into the map for, uh, I know it's the value of oxygen already, but I'm going to use the, uh, I can do it from here. I'm going to use a position of zero, zero as a starting point. So I will be here in a map. I have a given position. And what I would want to have is all the possible options I have to visit. So to do is uh, I will keep the smallest one I think listman exists I don't even recall yep it does okay listman minimal value of searching recursively Those are going to just give me I don't care for the weight, I just want the direction. Okay, 
So those are just, you know, candidate directions I have there on the format type and direction. That is good. That is even easier because in each of these I could have the type oxygen. And if I find oxygen, I'm done. So um, Okay, how do I make this easily recursive? The thing I will want to do is, um, for each of the commands, I run the search again at that position. So, uh, I actually need to do here is, uh, I first need to do my base case because this is a search. I need to know when I stop. So if here I have oxygen and I return zero, that's a thing that's going to be my path linked to having found it. Um, if what I find is a wall, this is an atom bigger than an integer, yes, but I need them to be added anyway for these. I should actually never be on a wall. I'll return invalid, but I should not be in a wall, it will just ignore all of those paths I have. Okay, if I'm on the oxygen path, I have the zero count, it's good. I should find only one of them, so I should be able to actually carry my shortest path value with everything. So I have that. If I have any other value, um, then I know, I know for a fact I'm in a search. I'm going to just catch the result and throw in. And do a quick check there. I'm going to use exceptions as control flow. Again. And also throw in out of recursion. And then if I'm not there, then I know that I have to keep going into the map. So I had pick options of, I think that's the one I had in here. That was not pick option, that was pick command. So for all of these, how do I make sure I'm never stepping on one I have visited before? <clears throat> well, if it's not this, I'm going to mark the current tile I'm on as a wall. And so um, when all the subsequent searches go through, so if I'm on the path that is going, you know, I'm starting here and oops, I've got the little macros in that thing and I'm going that way. Um, the moment I step forward and now I'm here, now I'm here, I'm shutting it down behind me so I don't allow the search to ever backtrack. I'm always going forwards and eventually um, I should have no options on a path, which is going to be fine. Um, but I will keep looking into the other ones. I think that should work fine. So if I do have in the candidates zero commands, Those should already be sorted, right? Nope. No problem with that anyway. I need to explore all of them. 
So I will, for each command that I have, search the map at. Uh, I'm not applying the tile, I'm applying the direction. Of a given direction that will be passed in there at n plus one. And the search will be done by using the direction. I don't care for the type. And the commands I have. And this looks like this should eventually return an empty list, but because at some point I will find the oxygen, I should get a result I have. Uh, actually, I'm just going to return that found in here because I don't want to build the entire list for all of that. My direction, yeah, what is it? It requires a direction and the position that I had. Okay. Let's see what this gives me. Boom. Not working. On line 27. Uh, what is this? There's an anonymous function. This might be this one. Oh, I use big comment. It's not big comment. It's opt comments. Not good. Plural. Yes. It's possible. I blew it up again. Let's see. Those are all my options, so. Let's see what position I'm at. I'm probably at this step here. It's not working perfectly. We'll see just for that. Yeah. You know, southwest, north, southwest, southwest, north, southwest. I guess I need to mark all the directions I'm exploring to be done that way. So instead of doing it here, I will need to take my, my new map is going to be Okay, I will change this a bit because I'm already searching the next step. So, if in any of these steps, This is going to be for each direction in this stupid annoying map. So those are going to be the next ones. Okay. Now um, 
so I get a maximum of four of them. And the thing I want to do is And the thing that I should have in here is that, um, you know, uh, those are going to be all my values in there. And if I find one that is oxygen and also throw and plus one. So that's my search that I wanted to have. Otherwise, I assume that I don't get them, and so what I will need to do is, that's the fold here. I need to update the map to have all these values set to a wall. So, um, this is going to be a position. I'm going to have a map, and it's now a wall that position and I will do this starting from my base map for all of the next position and then I can call the little search new m on the position at n plus one for see what we get this time around. Interesting. I'm not supposed to be getting any of these. possible that my map has boundaries that have not been explored uh, because they were not required at all. And that's going to cause problems. Right. Uh, the search commands in here. I'm going to change this function because now It's not true that I need to fetch all of these with a default value of zero. I now want to search with a default value of a wall and only explore the things I have seen. There we go, 404. And hopefully that's right. I don't know how to validate it. We'll see. That was good. Let's go to part two. Okay, uh, that was fast on the last one. The issue is that because I was searching with a default of zero, all the points that were never explored in the first search of the map were still getting out again. And this is clearing that. So what do we have? It takes one minute for oxygen to spread to all the open locations are adjacent to the location that already contains oxygen. Oh no. Okay. Four minutes. So this is if it, 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 pretty much the same thing I have for part one. But the thing is that instead of searching for oxygen, I want to visit all the blank squares. Um, so we'll just call it fill map. And I'm going to make a, here it's going to be a fill search instead. And I'm going to start instead of from that point, uh, I'm going to start from the oxygen tank, which I've done before. 
it should be this value for x oxygen and maps to a map. And this is going to be my start point in here. I started zero steps because I think that's the thing they wanted, right? They were telling me to. One, two, three, four, yep. So essentially this is going to be the length of the longest path in the um, in the entire thing. So this is going to be a bit the opposite of what I had before. So here for fill search. Now instead of throwing when I get the oxygen, I will return the max of a given value. And oh, I can't do this one that way. So those are all the search candidates that I have. It's possible that this list is going to be empty. So I return n. Otherwise, I do this little bit here where I mark all my things as done. But instead of being on a wall, they are now going to be oxygenated. And here it's going to be the max value I found in all of these is going to be my fill search. Uh, here I'm going to change the search command to be fill comments because I'm going to use probably a little different logic where here it's going to be either type is not a wall and the type is not oxygen either. So only for free types. Those are the fill commands. And I think that might be it. Hopefully it is. If that's just a second part, nope. It isn't. I'm 47. Oh yeah, my recursion is bad. It's uh, where's fill search? Here I need to do the same kind of search and my recursion. Oh, oh, I get it. This is a right algorithm, but here my droid stopped once I found oxygen the first time around. Where's my droid again? Yeah, so here it stopped when it found a new map only. And this is no longer the fact. Now I need to explore the whole entire map. And I'm going to get the droid to do that for me. It's going to slow down part one, but make part two possible. So, not that way. Where did I stop on the oxygen? That was in apply tile. Right. Um, I'm a bit annoyed I need to do that, but those are always going to be search now oh. this one is going to be annoying because it's resetting my position and I don't actually need that. But here's the little problem I have is that um, once I have found the oxygen in there, once 
once I have found the oxygen in there, uh, I don't want to revisit that map. So I will need to treat when the type is not equal to oxygen. And also only do that when maps get found. So I want oxygen to only trigger when the oxygen, yeah, only when it has not been found. So as long as it's not found, it won't get out in here, I believe. And so I will be able to keep walking over it without breaking anything. And here it's no longer that. Yeah, I'm going to change the form to make it clean. Drop this, drop this. Drop this. And Oh no, that doesn't work. Search command, fill commands are good, fill search for good. This was all right. Okay, this is where I stop. So, this requires me to change the droid map a bit uh, instead. Where, when I stop here, I have to enter the mode. Search droid on the new map. And I'm not done yet at that point. So this is like a stage machine. So now it's a short I need to get the bid and the map. And what the search droid is going to do is uh, it's essentially going to be doing the same thing as I was with the other one, which is start from the point of oxygen. And my pass is just going to be So I'm doing this because I want to search exactly the same way I'm doing it in the other ones. It's just that now I need to also carry a count. Uh, but I want to make sure that I am not breaking the first part here because the first part in find short path, okay, it started at position zero already, didn't care. So what I'm going to do is my fill search that I'm doing here already. I'm going to do it with the bot, essentially, uh, and start counting my values from zero and return a new map instead. So I'm going to split my screen a bit. I'm already on the same start point. Search, draw it. Oops. It's actually going to be the fill droid and it's going to give me the calculation for the thing already. And I'm going to start with the value zero. Okay, 
so that's going to be the bare logic of it. Uh, let's keep this on the side for a bit because my filtroid needs to be closer to this thing. And I'm going to make it the kind of hybrid function of both. So it's no longer pick command. It's going to be um, fill command. already there. No need to do that. So this gives me the next possible values. The fill commands are going to be where the type is not oxygen. That should be good, but I no longer want to have that. I will have visited points starting there. So I'll keep this where the type is not oxygen either. And that will be my fill commands. I apply the direction to each of these. Those are all the optional case. Oh. This is going to be extremely, extremely painful as a thing because my position needs to be done depth first for each of these. Uh, yeah, because the bot does not let me jump randomly into all kinds of places. Uh, this is a pain in the ass. rewind that to the state where my stuff was not working and take a break to think about it because the little problem I have is that fill search fill commands fill search and that's where it exploded so the little problem and did it I have is that if I have I don't know this map and just make it a freaking donut and then my oxygen is here how do I cycle to only find unvisited points but know that when I reach a max one I'm at the end of the wall and um, yeah that, that's that's a big one I need to figure that one part out and uh, the thing is that when I reach the point I cannot just start looking at where I was I need to unwind and get back to wherever it is I am 
and that's annoying and that requires to search the whole freaking space and it might be easier to do it with uh, the fresh droid that marks the oxygen but stores the visited points differently and I might need to rewrite the entire thing and part one was absolutely not helpful for part two which is a pain in the ass but I'll take a break and think about that all right took a long break and I've decided that the best way to go forwards with this is going to have a different map entirely gathering the information so I'm going to uh, just call that one the map droid with the program and that will make things a bit simpler I think all right there's an underscore here yep um, I will spawn the program again and what I will do with this one is that this is going to be a space and I'm going to carry a list of um, all these points that exist in that one. So the map droid is going to just be this. I assume it's, oh wait, it's not a space, is it? What are the types I have? It's free. All right. And so I'm going to shuffle this entire thing. So um, one of the things I'm going to do for that one is that I will need to do some backtracking on each of the steps uh, that I have, uh, especially except when they're in the first one. So I will need to explore on a given direction for each of these. So uh, possible directions are going to be based on the map. And my current position, which is going to be zero, 00, like the other ones I had already. And then the thing I will do is, um, this is the first iteration, so I assume, assume it is save. Um, I will explore all of the directions with the map. And the same position I have in here. And the exploration for a given point once it is done will just give me my map otherwise I will take a direction and a list of direction the map I have and the current position and here's what I will need to do I will need to first uh, ah, I need a pit I will go in that direction as before I re receive the IO and the tile as before but here um, I will react differently based on what is in this unknown directions so if the tile is and I forget the name again because it's been a few hours wall and other all right so if it's a wall tile the thing I will do is I can't go forward and my cursor has not moved so I will explore um, the other direction Wait, where's the pit <laughs> I added the pit but I didn't note it anywhere so I'll store a pit here the other directions I will return the map with um, 
the new position, which would be Yeah, I will um, add a new function for this. Who care? Um, yeah. Apply the direction, which will be a wall. My position is otherwise unchanged, and I keep exploring. This will be trickier for the other ones because I will need to explore the direction I will put yeah this is where I need to start doing some cool recursive stuff and so I will probably need The new directions on to the position. I will declare first a new map with apply the direction. Okay. So I update it to have the new status, and then I get the new possible direction. This is going to give me the, the recursive map that was created by them. And then I pass to this, oops, there should be the PID. New directories, uh, the new map, and the new position. And what I expect is that this function will rewind everything it does before calling me, so I need to do exactly the same thing. So I, uh, and I'm going to do the direction that I have, but in negative, because I know they are um, integers underneath, so this is a cheat. And then um, I can receive the IO of whatever value it doesn't matter what it is because I know the content of my tile already. And then I can return the recursive map. And that should have unwinded the entire stack and brought me back to the original position that was there. Because that's the thing. I go down each one of them recursively. We'll get back until they are at the right step and be all right. <laughs> Actually, let's not cheat. Let's do it clean. <laughs> all right. So now what we need to have is apply the direction is one of them. Oops, I already applied the direction. That was... Okay. <laughs> I used that one and that was fine because apply the direction is exactly what I wanted to have. But they work on the coordinates first and the direction second. Direction... Because that was, yes, coordinate first. Okay, and then I will need to have the um, think possible direction is the only one I'm missing. And it's going to be very much based on this. I'm going to return these, but only where um, I 
it surely. Let's use standard terms. Undefined. And here I don't care for the type. I only need the direction because I'm changing how I'm doing it. It's just that the type is not equal uh, where the type is undefined. And so I will never look again for one of those that I know. Um, possible directions, I think I no longer use the map direction on this. Yeah. And P. I think this might work. Um, of course, it doesn't. Wait a second. 96. The pit isn't used. That is fine. Uh, recon trace. And yeah, it's no longer the droid function that I have, it's explore. Interesting. Um, the new nav is updated each one of them and I do a depth first search, which is what I need to do with these. The new map is being returned on this. And I search the other ones. Oh, I never search for the other ones that I have here. So here, the thing that I want to do is not this, is to search again with the directories that I had already accumulated on the top. And here it's the cursive map. And the new position should in fact be the same exact position I had at first because I rewound up to here. Let's compile. Still having that problem. So I'm stuck somewhere in explore when the list is empty, but when the list is empty here, that should be, f oh, wait. So I should be returning the final map. And what do I do with the map droid? I send the result, I res oh, it's fill map. Okay, so let's start by not calling this and just returning the map for now. This is going to complain, but I think this is good. <sighs> what is being hung up? I'm going to explore all the freaking things. Probably, yeah. get bigger trace output. Really? Okay. So I die after a flip call. Oh, I get it. <laughs> the flip is not valid. I messed up with the flip direction. It's not true that I can flip them. Uh, all right. So I will need to make sure you'll flip in here. And so flip north, give me south. Flip south, give north. Flip east, gets west. And flip west gets east. And I knew about this one because the last thing to trash was the flip instruction. 
which meant that the rest, the last one to block was probably this one. So I was sending in an invalid input and probably messing up the other one. And I got my map. Okay. Free wall, free wall, free wall. This means that I can probably fill my map again. And the fill map function started with whichever had the oxygen. That's my starting point. That should remain correct. And the fill map should go through these. So let's see. 406. I had 404 before, right? Let's see. Hopefully it's right. And it's right. Okay, so I was not super far, I just needed the entire map. And the thing that I needed to do is to indeed clean up my little act here and create the map fully. And uh, I didn't explain it when I started. The reason why I decided to just write a new robot entirely is that I wanted to keep um, you know, the first droid working. And the approach that I took on this one uh, was a kind of probabilistic one where the command picked was just explore all the things and I know that eventually I'm going to find uh, the oxygen. But if I took the map and removed the oxygen entirely, this droid would never stop running. It would just keep running and running and running because it has no idea that it has explored the entire map. It just knows that at some point it has explored some areas more than others. And this one here, um, goes from the entire thing from beginning to end. Uh, and the fill command does, my search that I had does require to have the full map, but the shortest path does not at all, all right? If something does not exist, it's not a problem. And so that's what I have for day 15. So see you again for day 16, uh, which might not be done on Monday, might come out on Tuesday, but yeah. Hopefully you enjoy that as well. Have a good day.